Somewhere in the Florida Everglades, an alien killer stalks its prey. The carnage is evident. Bodies are turning up. But in a shocking twist, both victim and perpetrator are mysteriously dead. A Burmese python. An American alligator. Two gigantic reptiles in a battle nature never intended. The case is a wake-up call. Around the world, alien species are invading. But in the Everglades, it's reached a new extreme. In fact, throughout South Florida, bizarre alien reptiles are infiltrating. These animals are just everywhere, and that's really scary. Clue by clue, experts take apart the case, sizing up the adversaries, even going inside the belly of the beast to reveal what happened when the alien and predator came face to face. September 26, 2005. A chopper pilot is out on a routine flight over the Florida Everglades. Shark Slough is miles from any road. There, the pilot spots something in the sawgrass. It looks like a reptile, but not like any reptile normally found in the glades. It was a pretty gruesome sight. It was amazingly big. I've never seen something that big. He's seen pythons before, but this one somehow has a gator sticking from its side. It's so baffling, he's willing to wade into the swamp. And I started getting, you know, a little nervous about being up to my waist in water in an area where there's 12-foot uh, uh, pythons hanging around. The pilot makes a quick exit to get help. The hot, swampy glades have always been strange. They just got stranger. Once, we treated this place like a wasteland. Then we realized it's a national treasure, a sanctuary for scores of vulnerable species. Now, a giant alien snake is here, preying on the very animals we're trying to protect. Within 24 hours, park biologist Skip Snow arrives to the scene of the clash. So I was amazed. I mean, when, when, uh, when our pilot came back and told me about it, it was important that I get out there as soon as I can. We've seen encounters, but we've never seen one of, of this nature. First, the facts. Identify the bodies. A monstrous 13-foot Burmese python, badly bloated, head missing. Its belly burst, and half inside, a six-foot Florida gator. Who attacked whom, and why? That's amazing. Could a snake really overpower a predator as large and dangerous as an alligator? Is this just an isolated attack, or something bigger? An invader wreaking havoc on the local wildlife, even threatening to upset the natural order of the Everglades. If you're an alligator, the glades are your domain. For 240 million years, your kind has survived on Earth. Indestructible. 
ascending to the top of the pecking order as an apex predator. Except for incursions by men with guns, nothing messes with a big gator. Even humans make the mistake of underestimating this animal. Crocodilians are famous as fit and wait hunters. But there is nothing laid back about their attack. They can launch from the water at speeds of 50 miles per hour, faster than a galloping horse. Small prey gobbled down like popcorn. Large prey drown and shaken apart. But now, the alligator is coming face to face with a rival. One with fearsome hunting powers of its own. Somewhere in the Everglades, a swarming world of alien snakes is gathering. And this is no ordinary snake. Pythons and other constrictors are among the biggest serpents on the planet. And they eat big, too. First, the victim is squeezed to death. Then, swallowed whole. Even humans have become prey. How do they do it? Bioengineering fit for a beast. This snake can open its mouth almost 180 degrees. Its jaws are built to stretch apart wider than their skulls. An adult human body is probably too wide for a python to swallow. But a gator more than six feet long? Maybe not. Park biologists believe the clash is more than a flu. It might be the first salvo in a war that could engulf the glades. One obvious question, how on earth do giant snakes from Asia get 10,000 miles to the glades? If you are a python, you are a survivor. Extremely tough, cold-blooded, able to last months without a meal. But these aliens don't cross oceans on their own. They're imported on purpose as pets. Do you bring any kind of food or plants or anything like that? Do you have any live animals? Over a million people in England now own exotic reptiles. The U.S. is going crazy for them too. Miami is a hub. 12,000 legal wildlife shipments a year. But smuggling is rampant. Well, a few years ago, I worked on a narcotics team here at the airport. We stopped a gentleman coming in from one of the islands. We were so sure we had drugs there, and when we looked at the screen, he was covered with um, live baby sea turtles. Sea turtles are endangered. Importing them is illegal. But few restrictions apply for a carnivorous snake that appeals precisely because it is so dangerous. In the last five years, more than 140,000 pythons have been imported into the U.S. And while owning a large, powerful constrictor can be a risk, many people don't see it that way. The Fisher family is happy to share their South Florida home with pythons. They have eight. Two are albinos, the same species that's causing havoc in the Everglades, only a newer breed designed for the pet market. After school, the Fisher kids take the snakes for a walk. Yeah. Oh my 
As hatchlings, they start out small and cute, but that changes fast. In a year's time, pet pythons can grow eight feet or more. Personality-wise, they're a lot like normal human beings. They have their moments when they're happy, they're glad, they're hungry, they're sad, they're a little touchy and all that. Unless you're afraid of them, they're not going to cause you any problems. If you are afraid of them, they'll try to use that against you. So I'm afraid of Casper more than a um, bulldozer. Casper will start chasing me around my house. They seem gentle, but there's always a risk these pythons may remember their wild animals. You have to be prepared to deal with a snake that's going to be 400 pounds. You have to be prepared, prepared to take care of it. Or you don't get into them. For now, these exotic strangers are just one of the family. But the older they get, the bigger they get. And the danger increases. Each year, snakes in the wild kill some 40,000 people worldwide. In the U.S., Pet pythons are a danger as well, killing or seriously injuring more than 20 people in the last 10 years. Rescue firefighters in Aurora, Colorado still remember this 911 emergency call four years ago. Fire emergency. Um, my roommate is being choked by a snake. It came across as a respond to a party choking on a snake. But we looked at one another and said, well, did they say choking on steak? Uh, surely they didn't say choking on a snake. They rushed to the home of Rick Barber. Hey, Marty. Hey, you want to come out? Rick Barber's 11-foot python has always been gentle. Come on. Oh, that's it. He's friendly. Barber has it draped around his neck when the snake starts to tighten up. The python may have suddenly felt nervous, and an innate response honed for millions of years kicks in, and it starts squeezing. I can't even get near that thing. We've already tried. There's no way we can get him off the head. And, and you got to do something because this guy is, he needs to breathe. He's unconscious. Okay, okay. Four firefighters and a policeman pry off the snake. But it's been constricting more than 10 minutes. More than enough time to starve the brain of oxygen. Paramedics rush Barber to the hospital. But in the chaos, firefighter Siegfried Klein has been left on his own to handle the python. I put both hands around it and it is, it's just one large muscle. It then wrapped around my arm. Equivalent to being pinned under a piano, a python's constriction is powered by 10,000 muscles. A human arm has five. They took the patient out and at that time I was alone in the basement with a large uh, python. It's not a comfortable feeling by any means. All of the firefighters, and even the pet snake, survived. The pet's owner did not. In Florida, so many pythons are on the loose, they've set up a hotline. You have reached the python hotline of Everglades National Park. I have a Burmese python in my house, which uh, I can't handle it anymore and I don't know what to do. I've uh, tried to contact many places, zoos, nobody wants it. It's about seven feet long. It's a little bit too big to handle in the house. When pet pythons get too big, too hungry, or too aggressive, some owners solve their problem by releasing the animal into the seemingly boundless Everglades. Now, alien pythons are here fending for themselves. One 
has had a nasty run-in with the Everglades' prehistoric predator, the alligator. Whatever happened, neither one survived. And there's no shortage of theories why. Maybe the gator got in a good chomp to the snake's head before going down the hatch. Maybe the alligator kept struggling once inside the serpent. Or maybe swallowing a gator was just too much, leading to a gut-busting death. In the Everglades, Investigators are trying to reconstruct exactly what happened when Python met Gator. The very future of the glades may be foretold in this tangle of flesh and bone. Snake experts Stephen Secor and Skip Snow first want to know if the python actually swallowed the gator. Back into the alligator's see its hind limbs. One clue, the state of decay of the gator. But what was noticeable is that the skin was gone. It was down to the dermal bone. That classic sort of dark uh, black uh, skin of an alligator was, was completely gone. Another clue, loose wads of gator skin. It looks like there's a, kind of a wad of, of alligator skin that had been sort of sloughed off. Uh, and it's kind of mounded up right there. And that's some evidence that the snake actually was digesting the alligator. The evidence suggests the python ate the gator and was digesting it. But how could that have happened, especially since it's a man-sized gator with plenty of big teeth and sharp claws? In a face-off, how would these two top predators match up? Gator, up to 17 feet long and 500 pounds, thrashing muscular tail. 80 conical teeth in a jaw built for chomping. Python, up to 25 feet long and 180 pounds. Coiling muscular body. Rows of razor sharp teeth. It's not like the gator has never seen snakes. It takes care of native serpents, even venomous ones, with its usual bad attitude. But now, it's up against an alien species it's never seen. The python is a consummate hunter. And ambush is its M.O. To locate prey, even if concealed, they see thermal shadows. On the sides of their mouth, multiple pairs of facial pits discern temperature differences of less than one-tenth of a degree. With prey close, the tongue flicks, carrying scent particles to the roof of its mouth. When a python strikes, it latches on with its teeth, coiling in fractions of a second. They don't use venom. Like boas and anacondas, they kill by constriction, squeezing out breath, stopping blood flow. There's no doubt both python and alligator are top predators. But that's what's so strange about this case. It's unusual for apex carnivores to take on one another in a battle to the death. In fact, the recent encounter in the glades was the fourth documented clash between gators and pythons in the last three years. Green back, in fact, yeah, it's a green backed hair. On one occasion, photographer Mike Mercier had his camera at just the right moment. I was getting ready. Uh, we came up to the overlook just to look at some birds at a distance. My wife looks over the rail and she suddenly screams, Mike, there's a snake and an alligator together. Oh my God. The 
photos would be the first to confirm Burmese pythons tangling with gators in the Everglades. It, his eyes were always on me, always on me. And I was talking to myself, and I felt kind of silly, but I, I was saying, I, I just want your picture, I don't want your meal. This time, the gator wins the day. It's the way we thought the outcome would be. But invasives often bring weapons that native animals aren't equipped to fight. At Shark Slough, Python beats gator. When it comes to these marauders, the battle could go either way. And what's worse, with an alien python involved, scores of other animals in the glades might be at even greater risk. Snake expert Ken Crisco is doing an autopsy to see what else this alien eats. We found this snake on the border of Everglades National Park. And here are some mammal bones right here. It's prey mixed in with all the hair. We have found lots of rodents as well as um, birds, lots of wading birds. The python is targeting animals most at risk, like rare and endangered birds. And they're competing for prey the gators usually take. They'll pretty much eat anything, and uh, anything that's appropriately sized, they're going to go ahead and take. Even more worrisome, the pythons are starting to breed. And once established, an invading reptile is exceedingly difficult to wipe out. During World War II, a few Australian tree snakes got into the Pacific island of Guam. Today, Guam has the highest density of these predatory snakes in the world. Sometimes, we actually aid and abet the invaders. Bulldozing the glades to make homes and farms has driven off many of the native predators that may have put up a fight. Pythons are exactly what this place didn't need. In many places around the world, it's already too late alien animals are permanently established. Guam, brown tree snakes. Australia, cane toads. Lake Victoria, Africa, Nile perch. Europe, gray squirrels. South America, killer bees. Great Lakes, zebra mussels. In Florida, the war with invasives is still raging, the outcome uncertain. Nearly 40% of its reptiles are already non-native, but it's giant pythons that have finally gotten the public's attention. You don't know where to walk, you have to be careful. I mean, you have to be extra careful in the Everglades anyway with the gators, but the Burmese python, that's, that, that's the scary one. This wasn't on anyone's radar screen. An alien snake and native alligator go head to head. We know the python succeeds in swallowing the gator. But how does a snake overpower a predator with bony body armor, slashing claws, and the most powerful bite in the reptile world? One clue could hold the answer, a mysterious wound to the victim's skull. Snake expert Ken Crisco and alligator expert Wayne King are trying to lay out a chronology. All the steps leading to the gators and the python's demise. A critical piece of evidence appears. They find a wound on the gator's head, a deep bite penetrating to bone. Is this wound from the python's ambush? Wayne King is suspicious. This is a python skull. The snakes have long pointed teeth, very needle-like, 
and they're good for grabbing and holding prey. These teeth will lacerate flesh. It will tear flesh, but it will not cut bone. And the python's teeth would have had to get through the gator's bone tough hide. Along the back of the alligator are rows of hard bony plates called osteoderms. Literally, bone and skin. You can see the size of these osteoderms protruding. And the, this is just such great, very strong body armor. When you have a chunk of bone missing from the skull, that was not caused by the python. That was caused by something else. Absolutely. But if the python didn't make the wound on the victim, what did? What about another gator? This is a tough crowd to hang with. Big males will attack juveniles in a display of dominance. And big gators have the bite pressure to inflict deep wounds. Five times more force than sharks. But if the victim was wounded by a large gator first, it changes everything. The python went after an injured gator. And other evidence from South Florida shows that these aliens are opportunistic hunters. In fact, there's a huge unplanned experiment going on outside the park, spreading mayhem throughout South Florida. So much so, it's turned into a full-time job for wildlife wrangler Todd Hardwick. Yeah, no, I'm in front of your house right now. Today, I'll he's responding to a house you. call. Okay, a cat is missing, and someone has seen a giant snag. Miami, some days, for me, feels like a large open-air zoo. I catch animals from all over the world without ever leaving Miami. The snake's still oh here. Oh my gosh, I have no idea where he disappeared. He was ever here and he's gone and I'm terrified. All right, you just stay right where okay, you're at. Okay, don't worry, I won't move. When it comes to catching pythons, Hardwick has the U.S. record, 23 feet. The way I look at it is whatever the hot animal is today in the pet trade will be the hot animal on the streets tomorrow. These snakes show up just about anywhere, usually the most unexpected place. Finally, Todd sees something in the corner of the yard. Let's see. And a cornered python can be trouble. <sighs> Getting control of its head is a must. Big snake, big snake. Easy snake. This is an exotic invader species. It doesn't belong here in Florida or anywhere in this country. And we just don't know the outcome of this situation. Well, I've heard that they're out by the Air Force Base and that uh, people have let them go after the storm and nobody's caught them and they're just breeding. And nobody cares. He bags it, but hundreds of others are out finding cracks in the local ecology to exploit. And pythons aren't the only ones. Three other alien reptiles are running amok in South Florida. Green iguanas, bufo toads, and monitor lizards all have voracious appetites and are causing their own distinct problems. The green iguana was brought from South America for the pet trade. It's exploding into a major nuisance. At Miami's famous Fairchild Garden, a collection of rare plants is under attack. We probably have about 2,000 3,000 iguanas in the garden. They eat just about anything that's kind of soft-leaved.
things like hibiscus, here's one that we just planted. If we leave this out in two days, you won't, there won't be a leaf on it and uh, it'll die. Like pythons, iguanas are multiplying at an alarming rate. With few natural competitors to keep them in check, the economic toll is mounting as well. We have three species of exotic gecko breeding in the gardens here. We have um, parrots, five species of parrots breeding within a mile of here. Spectacle caiman down the road and I'm expecting my first python in the garden any day now. So yeah, we're, it's crazy. Even invasives that don't look threatening can cause mortal danger. At least to pets. The bufo toad was released into Florida's sugarcane fields to control pests. But backyards are more interesting, especially ones with bowls of pet food. A native frog wouldn't be a threat. But this alien secretes a poisonous toxin, and if a dog ingests it, it can be fatal. Pythons, iguanas, and toads seem enough to qualify as a plague. One last invasive reptile among the most aggressive on the planet is laying siege to an entire town. The African Nile monitor is another species the pet trade introduced. Yet few lizards are less suited to captivity. Kin to the Komodo dragon, the monitor has a tail like a whip, claws like an eagle. They'll devour anything they can dismember and gulp down. In Cape Coral, 400 miles of canals built for custom waterside homes provide the monitor lizard with a perfect transportation grid. Lizard expert Todd Campbell has caught over a hundred monitors here. These things are so wary that um, you can be within, gosh, you, sometimes you can be hundreds of feet away and they just, they see you long before you see them and they slink back into the bushes or they or they slide down the canal and get in the water. Campbell is desperate to recapture 10 lizards outfitted with radio tags. Scientists can follow and study a tagged lizard, but if the tag batteries run out, it'll be 10 more monitors lost among thousands in Cape Coral. That was the monitor. I just missed him. He was right here, basking right here. So we've, we've seen two animals in 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes of looking. So Houston, we have a problem. The problem could turn into a Darwinian nightmare. An escaped exotic pet that is more than a match for native species. So well, my worst fear is that they're going to expand their range out into some of the natural areas surrounding Cape Coral, and if they spread beyond Cape Coral, who knows what could happen. In fact, it's an issue that could strike close to home. This lizard is scary to people and deadly to Cape Coral's wildlife. They're carnivores, they're true carnivores. They've got a full set of teeth in their mouth that enable them to um, grab and shred just about anything they want to. Their claws are really long and sharp and they've also got a, a tongue, kind of like a snake, forked tongue. They look for scent uh, and they track and capture and kill their prey. Exotic reptiles are on the march in South Florida. 
And for officials here, the most disturbing aspect of a python attacking a gator is what might happen next. Anything could be on the menu. If uh, a python can eat and swallow a six-foot alligator, why couldn't they eat a two- or three-year-old human being, which are, is much smaller? And people who don't care now that there are pythons in the Everglades, wait till something like that happens. In Florida, one battle has focused the invasive species issue like no other. Alien python versus native gator. We now know that both died in the encounter. But what could have caused the python to split open and literally spill its guts? To find out, we'll go to the last place you ever want to be. Down the gullet of a Burmese python. Here in the Everglades, investigators are piecing together the details of a death match searching for a way to explain why the killer dies along with its victim. Many believe the python was asking for it, trying to swallow something that big. Was eating a gator nearly half its size just too much? Literally a killer meal. To find out, Dr. Stephen Secor wants to test the potency of a python's digestive system. So what we're really interested in finding out is that can a python consume and digest an alligator without having any problems? And where we're actually going to feed uh, Burmese pythons alligators, pretty much similar in scale to this snake that was found dead in the Everglades. They're experimenting with a gator almost half the size of a python, equivalent to an average adult eating an 80-pound steak. But Secor's team immediately runs into problems. All right, guys, thinking of what I'm thinking. Yeah. What? It's not going to work on this guy. Switch this guy out. Raised on rats, the pythons at the lab show no interest in gator. That's not a good sign. What number is it? This is S4. S4, yeah. Do you have any hungry snakes? We got more snakes to try. To discover if a python can digest a gator, a python will have to eat one first. It's not gonna take it, we're gonna have to go to another option. Plan B, make the gator look and smell more like a rat. This should bite enough of the rat scent. It's a radigator. Jackalope. And it attracts some attention. Finally. That little alligator doesn't have a chance. Swallowing begins, and the gator's streamlined body helps. But what really makes it possible is the python's jaw. Four rows of razor-sharp teeth work independently to walk up and over the gator, pulling the throat over the meal. And with a tiny camera buried in the prey, you'll see the last thing a victim sees as it's swallowed. It is an amazing feat for these snakes to eat large items. And you know, a python could easily consume a food item that might be three, four times the diameter of its head. And that's, that's huge when you look at other animals in the world. They just can't do that.
It took just 10 minutes for this python to swallow a gator nearly half its size. But can it really digest the meal? One that's full of bones, claws, and tough gator hide. Using digital x-rays, we'll get a rare glimpse inside the python's amazing digestive machinery. Swallowing boosts oxygen intake by 3,600%, driving tremendous amounts of hydrochloric acid into the stomach. And that acid can break down the skin, it can break down hooves, it can break down teeth, it can break down bones. Still, it takes nine full days, and during digestion, the snake is listless and slow. Finally, almost nothing remains. Pythons in the lab have what it takes to eat and digest a big gator. But what happened in the Everglades? If it didn't explode from eating too much gator, why did the python tear apart? Another photo offers a possible explanation. The gator's claws. Maybe the alligator, still alive and desperate inside the snake, claws its way out. The orientation and the position of uh, those formidable claws um, right, right in the vicinity and to this wound in the snake um, doesn't, that, doesn't that suggest to you that, uh, that there may have been a, um, a breach from the inside? Hard to say if uh, at all that the, um, those claws and those hind limbs had anything to do with that, that, that wound, that opening in, in the snake itself. They certainly helped them in the wild. Alligators use these powerful diggers to make nests in water holes. Oh, they're, they're sharp. But could he have used them once he was in the python's gut? For the alligator to puncture the snake, it had to have its claws in an attack position. But pythons swallow their prey head first. The gator's limbs would be pointed backwards within a very constricted stomach. And in here, there's no oxygen for the gator to breathe. The gut is like a stocking. It will hold the limbs right tight to the body like exactly. that. There's no way he can then reach forward and flex. Mm -hmm. he, can't, he can't bend that knee mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. If you look at the photographs, mm -hmm. this leg of the alligator, very plainly shown, is perfectly straight. Mm -hmm. In rigor mortis, it's been dead for a day or two, but it's stiff. It's not bent like this, it's not there, you know. That, to me, is very clear evidence that that alligator had its legs clamped to the side. The gator's claws didn't do it. But clearly this python got torn apart. Maybe these invaders aren't so invulnerable after all. Their numbers may be growing, but so is the army that's determined to wage a counteroffensive. Out in the Everglades, scientists are hatching a plan to capture pythons. Their secret weapon is a 14-foot python fitted with a radio transmitter. Implanting the device has made the snake quite irritable. Strike distance of a, an animal this large, um, it's quite capable of, uh, if Skip was to open it up there, I mean, she could strike and hit him in the face quite easily if she wanted to, so you've got to be, be quite cautious. I'll encourage you, Dick. Yeah, okay, we're good. Electronic surveillance turns this big female into a double agent. As she lays down a scent trail, it may entice male pythons hidden in the park to her location. And then sometime down the road, we'll be able to find those animals and remove the untagged ones. Preventing pythons from making further attacks on the local wildlife may be nearly impossible. But if the scientists can track them via radio signals, determining their movements, we may learn if the invader has some sort of Achilles heel. 
they've already discovered that some pythons tend to bask near the park's sun-baked roads. Pretty close. What are you looking for? We're uh, radio tracking Burmese pythons. Really? Here? Yeah. Sometimes the trackers must go deep into the swamp grass. Following a signal they know leads to an animal capable of attacking humans. It makes you a little bit cautious, yeah. Uh, because they're so long, you could stand on either end of it and uh, not even know it. You just need to uh, be on your toes when you get a bit closer, that's all. This is our big female. Watch out, watch out, watch out, man. Thank you, good. If it's this hard to find a python, one fitted with a high-tech transmitter, imagine how hard it'll be to locate countless stealthy serpents in this million-acre park. It's too early to know if they can stop the invasion. But after an intensive investigation, we'll finally learn what some experts think went down when Gator met Python. And the most intriguing clue of all may be the one that's missing. The giant python's head. The case is bizarre. Python versus gator. But the investigation has already pieced together much of the story. We know the alligator was already wounded before the fight. We know the python swallowed the gator and was starting to digest it. And experiments suggest the big meal didn't cause the python to explode. Nor did the gator's claws slice it open. All that remains is the question, why did this snake tear apart so violently? It's mysterious. Right from the start, investigators see that most of the python's head is missing reduced to fragments of bone. It might be a factor in the snake's death, but can't explain why the gator burst out of its side. Any forensic investigation requires close attention to detail. And Stephen Secor finds something that's been overlooked. What we have here is a large wound in the snake. Injured skin tissue on the exterior of the snake, exactly where the gator slipped out. Almost gives the impression that something caused those wounds. Something else came up and grabbed the snake. Has this scientist found the clue that solves the mystery? Who or what could have made such a gash to the belly of this beast? Maybe there were more than two adversaries. Maybe another attacker was at the scene. Stephen Secor has finally found a way to put all the evidence together to resolve what happened in the glades that day. An alien python heads out in search of a meal. It finds a target lying motionless, a gator suffering from fresh head wounds. Instinct tells the snake to go for it. The python's kill and big swallow sets its digestive juices to work on the gator's tough, bony hide. But the snake's body becomes bloated and stressed. Now the python is vulnerable to attack. Especially by the Everglades' own ancient predator. Another alligator comes along. and gouges a huge wound in the python's side. The 
fight may have been fierce. Enough to push part of the swallow gator out from the snake. In the end, the python and its gator meal lie dead. But the real killer is still out there. We may never know why it didn't return to devour the alien snake. Crocodilians sometimes leave large prey to rot, making them easier to tear apart. Yet its role in the encounter might be a sign the alligators won't give up their territory lightly. In fact, a far greater concern is the impact of having not one, but two top carnivores here. Investigating this mystery has given us a glimpse into an invisible war that is just beginning. The once endangered alligator is back in abundance. And pythons can breed at an astonishing pace. No one knows what a combination of native and alien predators might do. The real battle may not be pythons versus gators. It may be the havoc wreaked on scores of smaller species when two kinds of gigantic reptiles are out forging for prey in the glades.